Hey everyone, I hope you all had a nice Easter. I hope that the weather is getting nicer for you wherever you are, especially if you're in the Buffalo area. It's time to get geared up for summer, time to get geared up for Bill's training camp, and obviously Bill's season. The draft uh, is now behind us, and I think a lot of fans are really excited about it and very pleased with the, the results with the players the Bills came out with, and I would include myself in that group of people. I was very happy with the way, obviously, the first round went, which we'll talk about momentarily, and even in the day two, uh, the day two and three, I think the Bills came away with some with some nice players. So, I mean, granted, the draft is a crapshoot. We pretty much all know this. Um, that's why in the past I had been, or I've told you about how much I don't like trading up because I don't like giving up other players, or the idea of other players, for, you know, one player that you really can't be sure is going to work out. And that was why the day of the draft, when all these things are coming through about, are the Bills going to move up to three with the Jets and get Quinn and Williams, or, you know, there was a couple, John Clayton had that, a couple, I think I, I might have read it a couple other places. Now, besides the fact that I can't wrap my head around why the Jets would do that. Why would the Jets trade Quinn and Williams to the Bills, essentially, instead of taking him, and then let Quinn and Williams chase their quarterback down for 10 years, plus, maybe. You know, that just doesn't make any sense to me, but um, it, it didn't come to fruition. But on top of that, I... If I, I'm just saying, look, I'm just going to speak from my perspective. If I were the GM of a football team, I would want to be, you'd want to be right as much as possible, right? This is what your job is based on. Your job, you're, you're graded on, you're judged on being correct and building a good roster. And I think the Bills have built a very good roster up to this point. It looks like, like a, a full roster. Like they're going to have some difficult cuts. We're going to go over those too. Um, you know, who might make the team and whatnot. But trading up, especially in the first round, if it's unless it's for a quarterback because it's the most important position, which the Bills did last year, and I didn't really have a problem with it, you're sacrificing other players that you could be picking in the name of one player. So you're really judged on that one player. And that kind of happened to Doug Whaley. He was judged harshly on Sammy Watkins because of what he gave up to get Sammy Watkins. You could have found these other players in the later rounds, or if you traded next year's first, you could have found nice players. But instead, you gambled on this player, and you better hope it works out, because that's your resume, that's your GM resume. So for me, I would be more apt to trade down, just because I would want to be increasing my odds of being right more often. You pick more players, you... you Odds are you're going to hit on more. That's just the way I see it. I, I get the argument for trading up. I really do. Like, if you've identified players that you think are, are, are better or more you know, suitable for you, for your culture, for whatever, like, then you can go get them. And the Bills did that with Cody Ford. Again, we'll talk about that. They only traded up two picks. And they traded the pick that they... They traded it to the Raiders, a fifth rounder, to the Raiders... The, they got from the Raiders for A.J. McCarron. So, I mean, that just makes me laugh. I really didn't have a problem with that because it just made me laugh. The Raiders traded a fifth for A.J. McCarron and then moved down two spots in the draft for the fifth-round pick that they originally had. And that is just so typical Raiders. Speaking of so typical Raiders, thank you, John Gruden. Thank you, Mike Mayock, for drafting Cleveland Farrell at four for firing your whole staff two days before the draft or something because you're going to be, well, wait till you see what we do. Wait till you see what we do. And you take Cleveland Farrell at four, which I, I liked Cleveland Farrell at Clemson. I thought he was a terrific player, but at four, it seems a little high. And granted, I just went on this long rant about just hitting. Just, just hitting. But they... <laughs> They certainly left some talent on the board. And because they did, it benefited the Bills. And because the Giants and Dave Gettleman, who is must still be 
you know, scratching Brandon Bean's back or something, takes Daniel Jones at six, the Bills end up with that Oliver. I mean, I, in terms of value at nine, like, Ed Oliver's, like, Vegas rating or, like, or ranking was, like, eight. I think it might have been, I, I can't remember exactly how to, how to word that. That, like, 90-some-odd percentage, there was a 90-some percent chance he went in the top eight or something like that. Or his betting line was eight. Will he go higher than eight or something like that? So, I mean, for him to fall to nine, just, again, it's been said. Thank you, Dave Gettleman. Thank you, Mike Mayock and John Gruden for sliding the board down. Thank you, Arizona, for taking Kyler Murray. Just like you said, you, you know, you kind of tried to hide it, but everybody pretty much knew what you were going to do. And um, the Bills end up with Ed Oliver. With the out goes Kyle Williams, in comes Ed Oliver. We talked about this in my draft preview video. Ed Oliver was one of my two favorite players. Devin White being the other one. He went five to Tampa Bay. So once we got past six and Daniel Jones, the Bills are sitting at nine. And I'm still seeing Josh Allen, TJ Hawkinson, and Ed Oliver on the board. So I'm just like, yes, this is gonna, something's going to happen. I would have been happy with... Any one of those, I think Hawkinson would have been the most, made me the most nervous just because of the nature of the position, I suppose. I just because I think the Bills needed more on the defensive line with Kyle Williams being gone and, uh, you know, with, and pass rushing. You always need the pass rush. So Josh Allen would have excited me as well. Plus, obviously, having two Josh Allens. Obviously. Um, so, like I said, the Jaguars, then the Jaguars kind of uncharacteristically, in terms of Doug Marone, go um, go with Josh Allen. And then I really thought with, like, Haloti Nada retiring and Matt Patricia being a defensive guy, the Lions would go with, um, with Ed Oliver, but they went with Hawkinson, thank God. And the Bills end up with, with uh, Ed Oliver. I've said that, like, seven times. I'm sorry. But I, I'm just I'm, – I'm really optimistic about that pick. I think that has the best chance to go pretty well. I think Ed Oliver – Everything you've seen of him since the draft has been positive. Um, like he's got just like seemingly an endless amount of energy. He wants to be here. He is super excited about being here. I love his play speed. Even though he's a little bit undersized, he like uses that um, as motivation on the field. And I think I think Bills fans are gonna like him. I think they're gonna like him a lot. They they already do like him a lot. And I don't think he's gonna disappoint on the field. I think he'll fit perfectly in that rotation with Latou Lale and Jordan Phillips and Harrison Phillips, and like that is a great four-man rotation at defensive tackle. Uh, moving into the second round, the Bills drafted Cody Ford. Uh, they traded up two spots again with the Raiders. We covered that, and that was obviously a position of need. We thought maybe the Bills might go like with a Juwan Taylor or something. He ended up sliding big time, um, and you know a, a tackle was was certainly possible in the first round, is what I'm saying. But once Ed Oliver made it, it seemed obvious. Um, Cody Ford was a first-round talent. The Bills were rumored to, well, even I think Bean might have admitted this, that they were trying to trade up back into the first round, but the price was too high. Good, I didn't want to give up. I, I'm glad they didn't decide to give up additional players in order to go get Cody Ford. They gave, ended up giving up one, I guess, by um, trading their fifth-round pick. So, in essence, they sort of traded A.J. McCarron for... You know, for Cody Ford, kind of, for maybe the rights to draft Cody Ford because he still had to finish in that sort of position. I don't know. I just like to word it that way and make it sound better. But um, because they ended up having to spend a second round pick and the fifth round pick on Cody Ford, so I, I don't think they'll. I don't think they'll regret that. And Cody Ford to me is of all the players that they drafted, sort of like the most interesting as to where he'll fit. Because will he play right tackle? Will he play? Will he, will he kick him into guard? Some people think the Bills might be willing to kick Deion Dawkins into left guard to let Ty and Seki play left tackle. But my thing with that is, are you gonna take Ty and Seki, who's 33, gonna be 34 years old before the season's end, and play him at left tackle and kick your left tackle into guard just to play a 34-year-old guy at left tackle for like one year, probably two? I don't know. I think they'll leave Dawkins at left tackle. I don't know this. I'm speculating. This is pure speculation. I think Dawkins stays at left tackle. Morse is obviously the center. I think Enseki does get 
the first shot at playing right tackle, maybe they put Teller and Ford in at the guards. Um, they do have Quentin Spain there. They do have Ladrian Waddle. Waddle is a threat at tackle. Probably could play guard as well. Spain is a pretty good guard. They signed John Feliciano. Like this is gonna be a completely revamped and Spencer Long completely revamped line. Who is definitely coming back from last year's line? Dawkins, I would say, is almost definitely coming back. I don't think they'll get rid of him. Teller, Dawkins, Teller. Um, I don't think Ducasse is coming back. I don't think Butker's coming back. I don't think Searles is coming back. I don't think McDermott's coming back. Bodine might be a pretty good candidate to get cut with Morrison like Spencer Long in the mix. Maybe they keep Bodine on as a reserve. It's going to be a completely revamped offensive line. That's good for Josh Allen. Great news for Josh Allen. He was the second most pressured quarterback last year. Had the second highest drop rate amongst his receivers. So they addressed the O-line. They addressed the receivers that we talked about in free agency with Beasley and Brown. And, um, you know... Uh, I, I don't blame you for being optimistic. I'm, I'm sounding optimistic right now. A lot of people, the Vegas win total on the Bills is still 6.5. So there's still a 6-10, and 7-9 team to most. To most um, or statistically, you know, according to Vegas. But I get it. You know what? I get it. The Bills are in a, a prove it. They have to prove it. So moving on through the draft, uh, third round, I think was where a lot of people were like, whoa, and when they drafted Devin Singletary, the running back from For uh, Florida Atlantic, I think a lot of fans were like, okay, well, we can definitely have a conversation about trading LaShawn McCoy, and I would agree to a point. I don't think they're going to trade LaShawn McCoy because they don't have to. They saved $6 million, but like, so what? It's not really affecting you right now. He's not going to affect you next season when his contract is off the books. Uh, I think that if somebody comes through with some crazy trade offer for LeJean McCoy, they'll probably listen and maybe even pull the trigger on it. But I think the plan is to go into the season with LeJean McCoy as the starter with uh, TJ Yeldon, who they signed prior to the draft, with Frank Orr and Devin Singletary. Uh, Frank Orr showing Devin Singletary basically how to be a pro. Um, they stayed true, they, they, they phrased true to the board. They pick best players available. They went with Devin Singletary. I mean, it... I have no problem with it, personally. Uh, I mean, you're probably only getting Gore for one year. You are probably out of, you know, McCoy's probably out after this year. So then next year, you're looking at Yeldon, maybe, if he's still here, and Singletary. So this is, they're, they're thinking ahead. I don't I don't think this is, you know, in the, in the short term, this would be like, that doesn't make much sense. Why would they do that? Are they going to trade McCoy, this, that, this? Well, I don't know. Think about ahead. Two, you know, 2020, Singletary might be the starter. It's just something to think about. Um, I, I I know that that's a deep position um, on their on their roster right now. I do think that I would say that Sonoris Perry, listed as a running back, will make the team for special teams purposes. I think him and like Maurice Alexander, Andre Roberts. I think these guys are going to make the team because of how poor the special teams performed last year, and the Bills are making a concerted effort to make that unit better. So I think Snorris Perry makes a team, and maybe they don't keep an extra linebacker or an extra corner or an extra safety. And You know, I, I, you don't have to be like, wow, why would they keep five running backs? It's like, oh, well, maybe they'll just keep, like, a certain amount of linebackers or a certain amount of defensive backs instead. because Or one less, just to keep the one, as, one extra running back. Because there's guys, like, such as... I'm not writing these guys by any means. Lafayette Pitts, Deion Lacey, those type of guys... Pretty good, very good special teamers in their own right. They might take one of those guys and and cut them, not necessarily them specifically, but I guess it's possible, in the name of keeping the Sonoris Perrys around, the Andre Roberts, etc. You know, just to, you have five running backs, you have one less corner, one less defensive back. I don't know if they want to go that route, but I think that they might be angling them towards that way. Um. The Bills traded up again in the third round, traded two-fourths. So they again traded one player, one extra player, to draft Dawson Knox, tight end from Old Miss. Um, tight end was, I think, a pretty big position of need for the Bills coming into the draft. They only had Tyler Croft, Jason Kroom, and Jake Fisher on the roster. They took Knox in the third round. They ended up taking Tommy Sweeney late in the seventh, so I'll just cover that right now, I suppose. Uh, I can't imagine more than three of them making the team, and I think Croft is pretty much a lock. Dawson Knox is pretty much a lock. So, 
Um, it comes down basically that last spot to Kroom, Fisher, and Sweeney. I think Fisher probably gets cut, Sweeney probably makes the practice squad, and Kroom probably makes the team. That would be how I would guess that it would break down. Um, you know, it's not a it's not a position that really jumps off the board for you, for Bills fans, for their offense, and it it's it's kind of a dying position in the league. Like, well, who are the good tight ends? Like, I know I'll, I'll I'll forget some, but like like after Gronk, it was like Kittle and um, she's like Ebron scored a bunch of touchdowns. Uh, I, I'm so blanking on tight ends. That's how thin the position is. And I, I feel embarrassed right now because I'm not in fancy football mode. And I'm just, I'm blank. I'm blank. On, help me out on some of the tight ends. Because I'm not going to sit here and go through every single one of the teams and talk about them. Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. There we go. Travis Kelsey, George Kittle. Like, you don't have many game-breaking tight ends. So... I'm not saying that they're, the Bills just drafted one in Dawson Knox or that they acquired one in Tyler Croft, but they could be threats in the passing game, could be threat, could be decent blockers. I know Dawson Knox got really good uh, remarks for his blocking ability. Uh, Bills ended up trading their fourths, obviously, uh, as I just said, for Dawson Knox. So in the fifth round, they went and got uh, Voshan Joseph. Voshan, Voshan, I apologize if that's the wrong pronunciation. Uh, and I, I, from what I've seen from him, I liked his game at, at Florida. I thought he was a, a, a pretty good linebacker. He might be a little undersized for the for the NFL, um, but I don't always buy that. You know, especially like uh, people just say Oliver's undersized too, at like six two two ninety. Like, I just I don't I'm not buying that. They said Kyle Williams was undersized too. I think Joseph has a chance. To play probably, you know, as being that in that sort of reserve role, that like Julian Stanford role, he might still make the team for special teams as well. He might be one of those guys I talked about a couple minutes ago. Um, you know, he play he started when Tremaine Ed Tremaine Edmonds was out. I think Joseph would benefit from the he could benefit a lot from uh, the training camp, from playing in the preseason, and I think he will ultimately make the roster and probably contribute on special teams for. A while, and then maybe he'll get a, maybe he'll get a chance to play because with Edmonds and Milano, although Lorenzo Alexander might not be around forever, obviously won't be around forever. I think Edmonds and Milano are the core guys there in the linebacking group for a while. Um, Jaquan Johnson was drafted in the sixth round. I think that might be a special teams player for the Bills because safety is pretty deep for them after uh, Hyde and Poyer and Marlowe and Neal and am I forgetting somebody there? Do you have a list with me there? Um, oh, Raphael Bush. Veteran Raphael Bush. So, I mean, maybe there's a veteran cut in there with Bush. Uh, I think Neil's roster spot might be in a little bit of danger. Same with Marlowe, because Hyde and Poyer are pretty much locks, but uh, are obviously locks. This is what I alluded to earlier. And then uh, in the seventh round, the Bills draft, sorry, I'm, uh, before I get to that point, in the seventh round, they draft Daryl Johnson Jr., outside linebacker. Fine. The Bills will need a pass rush next season. Shaq Lawson, fifth-year option decline. Jerry Hughes, last year of his contract, maybe they keep him on. But, um, you know, ultimately, they're going to they're gonna be in the market, I think, for pass rush next season, for sure. Um, I don't know if Trent Murphy will still be around. Or, um, yeah, Murphy, Lawson, or Hughes, yeah. Uh, any of those. Yarborough, who knows. Anyway, um... Like I said, I, I love what they're doing with this team. I love how full it is. There's going to be tough cuts. There's that old adage that like, competition makes teams better. And it, I think we're finally going to see players push people. It, like, we've talked about it in the past, but the Bills just haven't had that talented of a roster in years past. This might be the most full the talent has been in a long time. So there, you're going to see some of these guys getting cut. These names are going to be like, whoa, jeez, wow. But, like, they have all these other players who can contribute. So tell me what you guys think. Tell me what you think about the draft, how you feel about Oliver, how you feel about, you know, Devin Singletary and Cody Ford. What do you think they might do on the line? Who might, whose roster spot might be in jeopardy? Hit me up uh, in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter. My Twitter handle and YouTube username are the same.
All right, guys, thank you for this coming far in the video. I will talk to you over the summer, and as always, above all else, go Bills.